Interstate 180 is a junior high and high school youth ministry that meets every Tuesday and is comprised of multiple churches of different denominations in the Dixon, California area. Our vision is for unity within the body of Christ and that true salvation and life change would come to the youth of our area. Weekly podcasts can be found on our YouTube channel and are all free for download. If you would like more info about our ministry, connect with us on our Facebook, YouTube, or Instagram at Interstate 180. We are in the book of Exodus. We are in the chapter 19. It has been a really crazy book. Last week, if you missed it, I had the... I had the pulpit, I shared with you Exodus 18, and I talked about judging. It was a good good message. I I saw a lot of you like this, yes, I've been waiting for this message. I've got some things to tell people. Um, That was not the heart behind that message, so if you walked out with that, I'm sorry. Um, We were really talking less about judging and more about Christian rebuking, what that looks like, what a healthy relationship looks like between brothers and sisters. Healthy relationship is not one where everything is peaches and sun, sunrises and you just walk around ignoring the fact that you're messing up. Um, a healthy relationship is iron sharpening iron. It is calling each other out when it needs to happen out of love. And it is done lovingly. And so if you're running around judging people after that message, come see me. We got some clarification. But it was Jethro coming to just straight up rebuke Moses, and Moses just took it like a boss and was like, you're right, and just did it. It was so beautiful. We're going to see another amazing thing from Moses in chapter 19, so if you turn with me there, we have a lot of scripture to read. Um, We'll get right into it. In the third month, after the children of Israel had gone out of the land of Egypt, on the same day, they came to the wilderness of Sinai. So finally, they get released The plagues, the sea crossing, almost death in the desert. And then finally they come to what they understand is the place where they're supposed to be. This is kind of the place. For us, it's kind of like winter camp, right? I mean, that's kind of like our place or summer camp, whatever, same thing. We think about it. We plan it. The leaders plan it. It takes a lot of work. We get ready. We know it's there, we grind it out through the school year, and then we get to camp, and it's like our place, and you just know something's going to happen, right? This is like their winter camp times a million. This is like winter camp exponentially greater. They know God's going to show up. They're not really sure what's going to happen, but it's just this huge mountain, and they're camped out right below it. Verse 2, for they had departed from Rephidim, and come to the wilderness of Sinai and camped in the wilderness. So Israel camped there before the mountain. Tonight we're going to talk a lot about that winter camp, summer camp thing and the everyday kind of thing and what that looks like. Tonight we're going to talk about the way God speaks to us and how we should listen to him. If your relationship with the Lord rests solely in the squishy chairs of Calvary Chapel Dixon or in the humid, stinky, musty pews of Casadero or I'm not sure what Alliance is like, but I'm sure it's nice, that smell and that atmosphere of Alliance Redwoods, if that is where your relationship with the Lord is, where you're nice and cozy, where you know God shows up, We have some work to do tonight. There is more to God than Sundays, Tuesdays, and a week out of the summer, and three days out of the winter. I like what Matt said about summer camp attitude all year, and and what that looks like. And we're going to get, Matt just like basically helped me with an introduction of what I'm going to talk about. What does that look like for us? It's not as glamorous as you would think. We're going to get into it right now. Verse 3. And Moses went up to God, and the Lord called to him from the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel, You have seen what I did to the Egyptians, 
and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, then you shall be a special treasure to me above all people. For all the earth is mine, and you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and holy nation. These are the words which you, you shall speak to the children of Israel. So all those people, people of Israel are waiting at the bottom of the mountain. Moses goes up into the mountain, and God gives him this command. God speaks to him literally and tells him these things to go tell the children of Israel. He gives Moses a three-step Basically, like a three-step self-help program to knowing the Lord, being a part of his kingdom. Completely relevant today. Completely usable today for us. For them, it was easy. Hey, I just saved your butts more than once. Incredible miracles happen. No explanation for the locusts and the darkness and all that stuff. Got you out of Egypt Here's what you're supposed to do, people of Israel. Hear my voice and obey my covenant. Keep my covenant with me. And then here's what I'm going to do for you. I'm going to make you a special people, more special than any, any person on earth. You are going to be a, you're going to have kings and kingdoms. You are going to be set apart, literally, for me. Think about how this is today. Same exact message, same exact God, except instead of saving you out of Egypt, instead of saving you out of mortal slavery that will end when you die, Jesus died for us, so we are saved out of eternity. Out of eternity. Let that sink in. That's what we have today. Jesus Christ died for us, not so we could stop being slaves and wander around the desert, but to be free, be new creations, set apart. But the commandment is still there. Your job is to obey God's voice and keep his covenant. So I have a couple questions for you. Number one, something to stew over before small groups is, are you obeying God's voice? Actually, let's back up a little bit. Are you even hearing God's voice? Back up even more. What does that even look like or sound like? What does God's voice even sound like? What, how does he speak to me? And second, are you obeying his covenant? Well, what, I mean, you're going to need to tune in to God to know what the, his covenant is, right? We can read about it. We can talk about it. But to actually obey it? It's something totally different, right? I believe outside of the c commandments, outside of all the things God lays out beautifully in here for you to do, just instructions, I believe that we have a covenant and a relationship on our end to hold up with God. I believe that we're all calling. If you are calling, if you are chosen, if you are a believer in Christ, you have work to do here. I don't know what that looks like. I believe you have gifts that you need to use here. And I don't know what that looks like. Some of you, I, I know what you're kind of good at. That doesn't mean that's your gift, really. I think if we can get anything out of you guys before you graduate, it's just to get you a glimpse of what your giftings are, and what you're called to do for the Lord. When we focus so much on, am I sinning today? Am I getting it right? I don't know if I'm doing this right. I'm worried about my sin. I'm worried about this. I'm worried about that. I don't know about this. And we're not focused on, this is my gifting. This is my calling. I'm doing this today for the Lord because it's my job on earth until I die. Think of those two per different scenarios. We're praying you guys can start ushering into the second one. Because when you start living out your calling, full, fully alive, fully, fully believing in Christ, and fully believing that what you're doing is important, this, this, the battling sin, the self-righteousness, the arguments, the disunity among different congregations, that stuff just starts melting away. You've you got other things to do. 
So what the people of Israel, and between Israel and God, we're talking about here was a literal specific covenant. We have talked about one of those in Genesis, and I think I've referenced it enough. You can look back in Genesis to talk about that. I feel like every time I'm up here, I'm preaching about that, so I'm not even going to reference it. The people of Israel and God have a lot of covenants together, and they're about to have a lot more. We're called to hear and obey. And then finally, the third one is set apart. How much more are we set apart today than the people of Israel? Instead of just being a chosen people that God said, you guys are different. I don't care what happens. You are my people. You are literally (laughs) children of God adopted into his family. You literally can have his spirit within you. It's just, it's even better. God just like made it even better. So, verse 7. Moses, this is kind of good news. So he comes down. So Moses came and called for the elders of the people and laid before them all these words which the Lord had commanded him. Then all the people answered together and said, All that the Lord has spoken, we will do. Yeah, that sounds like an awesome idea. I like what you're saying. So all we do is remember what he did. I don't think I can forget that. So that's an easy one. The second one, obey and listen to his covenant and do that. Yes, I can do that today. It sounds good. And then we're set apart and kings and for the rest of history, we're his chosen people. Awesome. You can tell God from us, yes, we agree. This is a quick yes, right? And it's a foolish yes. Honestly, it takes them like a millisecond to mess this whole thing up. How often do we do that? I'll pray for you, man, right now. Just kidding. I'm going to go on Instagram. And then maybe I'll pray for you in two hours if I remember. And two hours later, you're like doing something else and you're just like, ah, I did not pray for that person. Shoot. How often do we make our yes... Uh, maybe, or worse, or yes, uh, pfft, not even close. I'm not doing that. I just wanted to look good. I wanted you to think that I was an awesome person. We've got to be careful what we're saying yes to. We've got to be p- careful about what we're promising. The Bible tells us to make our yeses yeses. Like, God is very serious about that. The people of Israel are about to mess this all up. But Moses goes back to God. So Moses brought back the words of the people to the Lord. And the Lord said to Moses, Behold, I come to you in the thick cloud that the people may hear when I speak with you and believe you forever. So I'm just going to read that again to make sure you got it. Behold, I come to you in the thick cloud that the people may hear when I speak with you. Up until this point, God and Moses have a thing. This is why Moses is who he is. He is on behalf. This is why last week I was talking, he was sitting judging everybody because he had direct connection with the Lord. So people trusted him. People were like, dude, you hear from God. We see all these miracles. We know you're connected. Teach us. Tell us. Judge us. Just tell us what's wrong. Tell us about God. For the first time, God said, the people are going to hear me when I speak to Moses. So our little thing we have going is going to be revealed to everybody. We're setting the winter camp stage right there. We're setting the summer camp stage. So Moses told the words of the people to the Lord. Then the Lord said to Moses, Go to the people, consecrate them today and tomorrow, and let them wash their clothes. I love that today. Consecrate them today and to, just consecrate them today and then do it the, again the next day as well. Let them, and wash the, let them wash their clothes and let them be ready for the third day. On the third day, the Lord will come down upon Mount Sinai in the sight of all the people. You shall set boundaries for the people all around saying, take heed to yourselves that you do not go up to the mountain or touch its base. Whoever touches the mountain shall surely be put to death. 
Not a hand shall touch him, but he shall surely be stoned or shot with an arrow. Whether man or beast, he shall not live. When the trumpet sounds long, they shall come near the mountain. So Moses went down from the mountain to the people and sanctified the people. And they washed their clothes. And they said to the people, be ready for the third day. Do not come near your wives. So God clearly instructs Moses, in order for this to happen, we need some rules because I'll flat out just kill everybody. Like, that will happen. So listen, don't let anyone come near the mountain because they'll die. And I'm going to speak, they're going to hear me. And before that happens, take, three, take two days, sanctify them, let them wash their clothes, let them get clean, let them get ready. When they're ready... For the third day, don't even let them be with their wives. Don't even let them be distracted with the people they love. Even that bond needs to be separate for a moment. That's how serious this is. Can you hear the summer camp kind of thing? I remember in the hallways, the first year ever, I don't know, maybe it wasn't, but I felt like it was, but we had Ziploc bags. We're like, cell phones, cell phones. No cell phones at camp, and people were like, no, I'm, I won't go. And they were like calling their mom and being like, talk, talk to my mom. I'm not going unless I can have my cell phone. And they were like fighting it. That actually happened. And it was like this thing, this like pushback of people were like, I'm not going away for a week without my phone. That's stupid. And they were saying everything, like I need to keep in contact with my parents. I need to have my med alerts on my calendar. I need to take pictures. And we were just like this, call your mom. I don't care. I'll talk to her right now. Hello? Yep, we're going to summer camp. They can't have their phones. Any problem with that? There's no refunds? Oh, okay, you're good? Okay, boop. Just drop it in the bag. Then the second year, after a week without cell phones, we got off the Ziploc bags. People were like, mine's off. Where's the bag? Chuck them in. They were ready. You don't need your cell phones at camp. You're getting ready. You're getting ready to experience God, and he shows up and delivers every time. Self, cell phone compared to with a week with God. Come on. Easy. How do you guys get ready? How do you get ready for a Sunday? How do you get ready when you're home and it's kind of getting like near bedtime and you know you need to spend time with the Lord? How do you get ready for that moment? I feel convicted about this. You know, sometimes I, I like come to church to preach on a Sunday and I'm just like running late, <laughs> brushing my teeth, sh- get here, turn the things on, do worship practice, and then I'm up here preaching. And I think back like, man, that's not good. I was not ready for that. How do you prepare your hearts to encounter the Lord? Some of you that really do think, you know, God is here. On a Tuesday, God shows up. I know it, so I'm making it to interstate. The worship's so good. Oh, man, the word, I, the, the word is like 40 minutes. Somehow I pay attention. Man, how do you get ready for a Tuesday night if this is so special? Prepare yourselves. I love, um, last week I, we had our adult meeting, and then I had to grab something out of the front room, and I burst in. And there was a group of our student leaders just praying for this night, kind of like a mini boiler room. I was like, oh, shoot. (laughs) They they looked at me like, what are you doing? And I walked away. I was like, dude, they're getting ready. Like, that's what they're doing. And they're they're helping getting you guys ready. We ought to show God respect in preparing our hearts for worship, preparing our hearts for a church service, preparing our hearts to read his word. This isn't something you should be flipping through, reading one scripture, feeling good, and putting your coffee on it. This is something where you, even before you open it, you should be like, oh man, I just want to, I want to hear you, God. Like my goal right now is to hear your, you speak to me through this. So my heart's yours, like whatever you want to tell me, even if it's tough, I'm going to listen. And then you open your Bible and start reading. So, then it came to pass, verse 16, 
They're ready. On the third day, in the morning, that there were thunderings and lightnings and a thick cloud on the mountain. And the sound of the trumpet was very loud. So that all the people who were in the camp trembled. And Moses brought the people out of the camp to meet with God, and they stood at the foot of the mountain. Now Mount Sinai was completely in smoke, not fog, not clouds, smoke, burning smoke. Because the Lord descended upon it in fire. Its smoke ascended like the smoke of a furnace, and the whole mountain quaked greatly. And when the blast of the trumpet sounded long and became louder and louder, Moses spoke, and God answered him by voice. Then the Lord came down upon Mount Sinai on the top of the mountain, and the Lord called Moses to the top of the mountain, and Moses went up. They're ready, they wait. And it happens. It actually happens. God reveals his voice to all the people. (laughs) It's just fire, smoke, earthquakes. In an audible voice that you can't even imagine what it would be like. How much is this like summer camp? You show up, you're ready, you dropped your cell phone in the bag, you prepared your heart, you were expecting, you show up. I was talking to somebody and like we, one of the years, we just like first church service of summer camp, we stand up there and my wife was singing a song and I just strummed the first thing and she just starts singing and I'm just like, oh my, and I'm just like crying like, what am I doing up here? I don't deserve to be up here. I don't even want to be singing. I want to go in the back. I don't, I don't want anyone to see me. I need to get right with the Lord. This is, this is like God's place. Like, I am not worthy of this. And it's this moment. It increases your faith, right? You guys, this is a way that God literally spoke to his people. And God still speaks to us this way, powerfully. Where you know it's him. You know that it was him. It impacts you so deep into your soul that you can't resist it. You know it. You're just like, ah, that's God. I I don't know what to do right now, but cry. Maybe hug somebody. Laugh, maybe. I don't know. It's just so deep inside of you that it just is real. God speaks to us this way. And the Lord said to Moses, Go down and warn the people, lest they break through to gaze at the Lord, and many of them perish. Also let the priests who come near the Lord consecrate themselves, lest the Lord break out against them. If they're not ready, they're going to die, Moses. I'm serious. Don't even let them get near here. Moses said to the Lord, The people cannot come up to Mount Sinai, for you warned us, saying, Set bounds around the mountain and consecrate it. And the Lord said to him, Away, get down, and then come up. You and Aaron with you, but do not let the priests and the people break through to come up to the Lord, lest he break out against them. So Moses went down to the people and spoke to them. So here's what I want you to do. If you have a Bible, this is going to be really easy. If you have a cell phone, it's going to be a little tricky. But what I want you to do is I want you to find Exodus 32, but wait. I want you to do it slowly, and I want you to go through chapter by chapter. When you get to Exodus 32, you can stop there. What you just turned through is the beginnings of of the second way God speaks to us. Now what I want you to do is compare what I just read to you in Exodus 19, where God speaks in fire and smoke and earthquake, and it's amazing, and people are terrified. They know it was him. Their faith is through the roof. They would 
They would even talk to a stranger about the Lord, I bet. They'd do anything. At that very moment, they would do anything for God. God, I'll never go on Instagram again. I'll never Snapchat another person again. I believe in you. Today's the day. What you just flipped through was the second way God speaks to us. And it's the commandments and his laws for his people. And there's more, you guys. There's more. What do you think God would have us do? What do you think God would put all of our weight and all our trust in? The one moment at camp or all this other stuff? Seems kind of crazy that it's all in here, right? And there's so much of it. But man, I really like the fire and the smoke and the earthquakes. We're going to talk um, after this week. Jesse's going to start, and we're going to go through the commandments really slowly. We're going we're gonna to reveal them to you, the Ten Commandments, and we're going to talk about them in full-length sermons, and we're going to go nice and slow. Our heart behind that is that you guys can start to discipline yourself in reading God's Word, believing God's Word, and living God's Word out. If you're here for the summer camp moment, you're here for Tuesday and Sunday, and that's it, you're hearing God's voice in one way. That's not wrong. He wouldn't have put that in the Bible. He wouldn't put amazing, awesome God-type moments in the Bible if it was wrong. It's not wrong. But there's just so much more. Have you ever seen, like, the... I don't see them as much, maybe because I don't watch a lot of commercials, but have you ever seen, like, weight loss pills where you just, like, take a couple pills and you don't have to eat anything or anything, and you're just, like, pumped with energy, and you just drop, like, 30 pounds in, like, a couple weeks? You're just like, yes, these pills, you can just... It's all you need. Take these pills, don't eat anything, have a little milkshake. A couple weeks, you're going to be just perfect. These, these dieting scams. We all know how to diet, right? For real. No, everyone knows how to do it. Just nobody wants to do it because it's hard, right? Really, you just need to change your habits. You need to just work out. You need to eat a little less than you normally do. Maybe eat a little more healthy. It takes a long time. It takes, some people it takes years But what happens in the first case scenario is that quick fix, it just comes right back. And in the second scenario, your life changes. How much more can God change your life when you start diving into his word, start understanding who he is, who his character is, Understanding what he'd have you do on an every single day basis. How much more will you get out of that? Summer camp moments are great, you guys. I love them. Like, I am looking, I'm already thinking about winter camp. I'm already like, how do I prepare? I need to get ready. Like, I started working on the worship song, like the set list and stuff, and I'm like, God, I would just like pray. For like 10 minutes, like, what are we going to do? Like, I don't want to make, I don't even want to write down a song that's not right. I want it to be just right. Those moments are good, you guys, but if you're not filling in the gaps with his word and what he'd have you do, you're missing out. And you're riding a roller coaster, and it's honestly not helping anybody. The most beautiful part about all this is that we are becoming more and more like Christ every time we start filling in the gaps with his word. Start understanding who he is and what he'd have us do. Let's read chapter 32. Now when the people saw that Moses delayed coming down from the mountain, the people gathered together to Aaron and said to him, Come, make us gods like Shell." That shall go before us, for as for this Moses, 
the man who brought us up from out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. Your heart will reveal where your faith lies. If it, re- if it lies in a Tuesday night, this Tuesday night is going to change someday. Who knows? It's not going to be here for eternity. If it re- re- lies with a person, you know, I just trust Paul. If Paul Sheldon says anything about God, I believe it. He is my pathway to God. He's going to fail. I love this part. Come make us gods that shall go before us. For as for this Moses, the man who brought us up out of the land of Egypt. God just said to them, you have three rules. Three rules, you guys. Number one rule. I brought you out of Egypt. God brought you out of Egypt. God sent the plagues. God made it happen. Me. Remember that. Nobody else did it. I used Moses mightily. I made the miracles happen. I got you guys out of Egypt. Remember that. They just instantly forgot. Where's Moses? Man, without Moses, we got nothing. Let's build a golden calf. That sounds like a good idea. You guys, let's put our trust and hope and faith in the way God speaks to us through his living word. I'm asking you guys tonight in small groups, talk, get real. Just be like, I don't read my Bible. Help me. Like, what do I do? Like, just get real tonight in your small groups. What can you do better to understand the way God speaks to you? Because we're called to hear his voice and obey his covenant. But you got to know what his voice sounds like. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the way you speak to us, God, the way that you have designed our relationship with you. You have set this all up. God, thank you for providing salvation, providing a new way to connect with you, God. But your word is forever, Father. I pray, God, that um, we would get real in small groups tonight. God, that we can talk honestly and openly about the way you speak to us, And what we need to work on, Father, how we need to hear your voice better. And uh, Father, I just thank you for this group of teenagers, God, the way you provide for us. I give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen.